I've been avoiding making this series of videos for a long, long time. You see, I was asked if I'd make a video about how to tiller a laminate war bow, but I managed to keep putting it off. Tillering any kind of big bow, for me, is a massive challenge. And what experience I do have is largely confined to self bows, that is, bows made from a single piece of wood. But I have to admit that using a pre-shaped laminated stave is a great way for beginner and aspiring bowyers to learn the craft and art of tillering. So, for better or for worse, here's my attempt at showing from the perspective of a novice my process for tillering a heavyweight English longbow. One of the biggest challenges facing the novice bowyer whose heart is set upon making a heavy draw weight English longbow, the so-called war bow, is the craft and art of tillering. The process of tillering is to encourage the bow's limbs to bend evenly so that the load placed upon them when the bow is being drawn is spread evenly with no stiff spots and no weak spots. It sounds easy, but it's remarkably difficult, and the higher the draw weight, the harder it gets. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process that I follow when tillering a heavier bow. This is a trilaminate war bow stave. It's not going to be a self bow like this. This is a U self bow made from one solid piece of U. This is a laminated stave. It's made from three separate sections of wood. It's one way for a beginner or a novice to gain access to heavy draw weight English longbows without the challenge of finding a wonderful piece of wood like this U. So let's have a quick look at this stave that I'm going to be working with. As mentioned, it's a trilaminate. It's made from three sections of wood. And with its dark belly and light back, it does sort of resemble you, which is rather nice. Overall, in length, it's 81 and a half inches. Between the knot grooves, it's 78 inches. And using millimeters now, it's 35 millimeters wide, 32 millimeters deep, and tapers to around about 20 millimeter cross section at the end of the bow and where it enters the nox it's 15 millimeters deep and wide. So why am I using a laminated stave? It's for one reason and one reason only and that is obtaining a stave like this is far easier than finding a piece of yew or elm or ash. Check out the description below there's some links there that will help begin your search so that you too can get a stave just like this. But just to add a little footnote to that, this is not a raw trilaminated stave. It's been pre-shaped, it's been tapered, ready for the tillering stage. This stave is also fitted with buffalo horn knocks. All you've got to do, and that's a very big all, is make it bend like a bow. So these are the tools I should be using during the initial stages of tillering. A tape roll and a pencil, some cabinet scrapers, I may use a block plane, I may not, a wood rasp and some calipers. To grip the stave whilst I'm scraping or rasping, I will use a shave horse, but you could equally use a vice or similar clamp on a workbench. To tiller the bow I should be using a tillering post. In this case it's attached to a tree, but equally it could be bolted to a wall or the side of a shed. I'm using a hanging scale with a capacity of 220 pounds. The tillering string, the long string, is simply an overlong bowstring of a high capacity. The sash cord which is attached to the scale passes through a pulley and there is a long length of sash cord upon which I pull. My first job is to measure between the knocks to find the centre of the bow and then along the entire back of the bow I mark 6 inch intervals. These are useful places to make measurements and compare limb to limb. I then fit the tillering string to the bow. This one is about 2 inches longer than the entire length of the bow 
about 83 inches. My intention is to make this a full compass bow. That is, when it's fully drawn, it resembles the arc of a circle and bends through the handle. This thick line is the centre of the stave. This mark is half an inch above that. That represents the point where the bow stave fits in my hand and balances in the crook of my thumb. The scale is positioned in line with this mark, representing where the arrow would be knocked. So I'm now ready to start the process of tillering this trilaminated stave. I've put the scale on, not at the moment to show me anything to do with the draw weight of the bow, but simply to demonstrate just how hard you have to pull a stave like this to get it to move. So the tips are moving maybe two to two and a half inches, but the scale is showing between 80 and 90 pounds being pulled. That's no clue to the bow's draw weight, but it does show you that you've got to pull some just to get a bow like this moving. But my aim now is not to see how much it will bend, not at all. It's to see what clues this stay will give me as to its shape. Is it bending evenly? Even with this small pull, it will give me clues. This is the very beginning of tillering. And this, for me, is perhaps the very hardest part. I think it's worth saying at this point that this is not the only way to tiller a bow. It's the way that I've found works for me. There are many others who advocate that a bow should spend as little time as possible on the tiller. That's because working it on the tiller does reduce its performance a little bit. They say, and I think they're right, that a bow should be crafted in such a way that it spends just minutes on the tiller, if that at all. But this way works for me. And if you're new to this, a novice or a beginner, it might well work for you too. So I've exercised the bow about 30 to 40 times now. Firstly, to start to train the wood to bend, it needs to learn how to bend like a bow. But secondly, to give my eyes the opportunity to assess the bend. Is it bending even? And that's what I'm doing now, and I'll show you why in a moment. So let's freeze the video here and see what this bow is doing. Overall, I'm seeing a very stiff bow, which is to be expected at this time. But I am seeing movement between six and eight inches away from the handle. This is the great advantage to me of the marks on the back of the bow. It helps me identify places where there's bends or where there's stiffness. I do recommend always using a camera during tillering. It's a great way to avoid the anxiety of trying to assess how it's bending whilst drawing the bow. Best, take an image or use a video, walk away from the bow and have a look how it's bending. It's a lot easier to see faults, to see successes in that way than ever it is whilst you're pulling on a heavy bow. The first milestone of tillering is being able to brace, being able to string the bow. And that's what I'm working towards now, gradually removing wood from the limbs so that they begin to move. I'm looking for a shape that when the limbs are traveling about six inches at the tips, that it resembles a strong bow. When I get to that stage, I look carefully. And if I feel okay, then I'll brace the bow around about three inches. Then it's back on the tiller, work it some more. And if it looks okay, I'll move it to six inches. This is a critical stage. If it looks wrong when it's braced, it'll be wrong farther through the tillering. This bit is really important.
So I'm making long, smooth draws with a cabinet scraper along the belly, working largely between the 6 and 24 inch marks, but not exclusively. It's no good just taking wood off from certain areas, because that bit will become thin. What you have to do is blend it in along the entire limb. Each time wood is removed from the belly of this bow, I return it to the tiller and exercise the limbs 30, 40, sometimes 50 times, teaching the wood to bend and making sure the wood removal that I've carried out has made a difference to the shape of the bow. So that's about 30 minutes work done on this bow now, during which time I've been trying to get the tips to move and the limbs to move in such a way that I feel confident in bracing it. Gradually, I've taken small shavings off to make the limbs move a little better. I'm now pulling on the bow 110 pounds. Again, no indication of the draw weight of this bow, but it's telling you how much I'm pulling the bow to make the limb tips move around about five to six inches. Each and every time that the bow is taken from the tiller, I check the laminations. I make sure the back has no breaks. I make sure the laminations are not parting at any place at all along the entire bow. And I check the belly for any marks or cracks. Always, always do this. It's a way of possibly seeing a problem before it becomes a disaster. So the limbs are now moving, but they're not moving that well towards the ends. Along here, they're still quite stiff. That's where I'm going to concentrate my work next. On the outer third of each limb, not the very tips, but the outer third of the limbs. I want to see that moving a little bit before I feel ready to brace this bow. But look what happens if we put an imaginary digital string on this bow. You can see now that it's beginning to look a little bit like a braced bow. It's not ready yet, but it's getting nearer. I always use a pencil to mark on the belly of the bow where I want to remove wood. And if there's an area that I think is becoming weak, I write the letter L for leave on it, so it stands out clearly. I don't want to make a mistake and remove wood from where it doesn't need removing. So I use hatch lines on the belly where I'm going to take it off and the letter L where I'm going to leave it alone. You'll have noticed that I've not removed any wood at all yet from the centre, the grip section of this bow, and that's because I don't want it to start moving just yet. A full compass bow will move and bend through the handle quite late during the draw. So all I've got to guard against now is that in working the limbs, I'm not creating a moving lever against a solid centre section, because that will cause eventually a break about here. So I now feel that there's enough movement in these limbs for me to brace the bow. Firstly, I'll go to around about three inch brace height, check the shape, put it back on the tiller, work it a little bit more, and then, if it's okay, take it all the way to full brace height, which for this bow will be about six to six and a half inches. Maybe then we'll be past the first milestone. In order to brace this bow, I shall have to use a stringer. So I've got to cut an extra knot groove just here, in which the stringer will fit. So I'm now ready to brace this bow. I've removed the tillering string and fitted a new string. It's made from fast flight and it's double looped. I find bow use knots often slip when using fast flight on a heavy bow. The tillering string 
now becomes my stringer. So here we go, first time stringing this fairly heavy laminate war bow. So the bow is braced now about three inches, roughly halfway to full brace height. And this is the first opportunity I have now to assess its shape. It doesn't look too bad. Another really useful visual clue for me at this stage is just comparing the limb tips, checking the distance of the string from the limb ends. It's a good visual clue to the symmetry of a bow, but right now, I'm happy to take it the next three inches. It looks okay to my eye. To increase the brace height using a double loop string, I simply remove one end from the knock, twist it two to three times and refit it, and then try again and check the brace height. It's when stringing a bow like this that the awesome power of the English longbow is really borne home to me. So that's this bow now at six inch brace height, all the way to where I wanted it to be. The shape looks okay, but now I have to start the tillering work properly. Same process as before, draw the bow a little bit, assess the shape. If it's okay, draw it a little further. If not, I have to start work with the scraper, removing stiff spots, leaving and avoiding weak spots, so the shape starts to come round. It's now that the scale becomes really useful. Now the scale will start to tell me the draw weight that I'm actually pulling on the bow. And it'll help me and guide me towards the final draw weight that I want for this trilaminate war bow. Here we go towards milestone two. <laughs> <laughs> 